For the latest top tips, reviews and advice, please subscribe below. Hello and welcome to Atwalls Outdoors with me, Mike. Telling you guys a bit of a review video on a brand new tent from Outwell. So this here is the Outwell Lakefield. Now Lakefield comes in two different sizes. It comes in a 5 and a 7. The 5SA and 7SA are basically the same in terms of the features, just meaning the difference is, is obviously the ability to sleep 5 or 7 people, funny enough. Now traditionally in Outwell's collection, the SA in the tent is always standard for Smart Air. Now for 2020, uh, Outwell have actually sort of got rid of the Smart Air system. Uh, the Smart Air system was basically the ability to pump a tent up from one single point and it distribute itself internally to all the beams. Now, I think personally it's probably a little bit fiddly and it's something that I, it always was a bit of a pain to deflate because the beams there would get distributed in one particular point. Um, but more importantly, not that many people really wanted to put it up from a single point. It doesn't take that much longer to do it from point to point to point. And as you can see from our own at walls pitching and packing video, I pitched this model on my own in about 14 minutes. When you compare that to kind of its predecessor, which was the Belleville 7 with the Smart Air system, it still took me just as long. Um, just the difference being is with each beam done individually, you then got a four additional bracer beams for the roof section. So you still get that stability that you had with the Smart Air, just maybe a bit more ease of putting it up um, and less worrying about where the air is distributing and isolating all the beams off individually because it's already pre-done by every beam being different. So SA now stands for superior air, just to confuse you a little bit more. Um, but it still kind of has the very outwell features that you come to know and love. Things like your sort of tinted windows, but have the crystal clear visibility through. So you have the privacy uh, on a nice day uh, without having to have the curtains up the whole time. You've got this kind of Gothic arch uh, kind of style, which you can remember from the Vermont 7SA. Uh, it's great, it give you better interior height and certainly better interior uh, sort of height in especially in the corners just from the sort of slightly more upright front. New features run throughout the 2020 season so we're talking we've got um, uh, TPU bladder beams now rather than PVC so again so it's a bit more durable and gonna last you longer. Storm straps located at the front and the back yet again to give that a little bit more torsion to the roof and help it really make it look absolutely pucker. Also we're talking we've got uh, a really smart roller bag um, and it now comes in one bag as well. So previously the Belleville came in two parts. You sort of put the main body up first then you zip the canopy on separately. So it was it took a little bit longer to do because it wasn't pitched as one. Um, so, but now you've got all in one roller bag, canopy and all goes in there. And you can actually see from my at walls pitch and packing video how quick, simple and easy it really is to pitch uh, and also pack away for that matter. Other features that we sort of come to know and love are things like the low level ventilation to help a circulation of air to sort of fight condensation inside a tent. Now literally every single window you see there has got that feature um, beneath it. Moving towards the front door, uh, I think generally the tent looks really smart. It's real kind of nice sharp blue. Um, certainly makes it feel very premium and that's kind of what Outwell are trying to achieve with the level of features um, and also the quality they use in the fabric. So yeah, again, we're talking a, uh, a nice 150 denier, 6,000 mil high static head so it's nice and waterproof but it's slightly thicker than most other fabrics just to give you that more durability and longer lifespan. The front door is called very multifunctional so it can be rolled um, sort of from left to right or right to left and yet again can be put in a halfway position and behind that front door as well we've got a full frontal mesh door so you can actually I'll tell you what we do there's four zip runners on here so like I said just to help you make it multifunctional so if I take the top two I've just done both zips at the same time, haven't I? More than empty. There you go. So you can see, you can create like a little, almost like a little veranda, have the airflow through, but keep things up. So like I said, that door can pretty much zip all the way to the left or to the right as you're choosing. So I'll tell you what we'll do now. Let's uh, zip it to the right. Bum, 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 bum. So you can really kind of make it, you can set up your interior sort of awning area as you want to really, just because you're not sort of hindered um, by having things, put things on left and right 
juice attempts. Now, there is a little toggle tabs to retain that halfway if you wanted to. For the time being, I'm just gonna shove it out, shove it through the back, get out of the way. Just peg that a bit more just to keep it there. And then you can see that full mesh door, and there's not many tents on the market have this inbuilt into it, uh, which I think Yegin's yeah, a, a sort of a tick in the box for this particular model. Other things you can see are the little brow canopy. So we've got a rain safe door situated on the right hand side of the tent here as well. And that allows you to have a good airflow with a full mesh door located on the side. There is a myth layer a mesh door on the other side as well, adjacent to one another. Just the fact that this is the only side with a brow canopy. Fiberglass, really easy to put in, quite lightweight, packs nice and smallly into the actual tent as well. Um, but it means that if, it, if the weather does turn, you can use this as your main door into the living area and worry about the water coming down and into the tent itself. Other things you've got are things like the floating guidelines, the ability, so it just kind of makes the more important part of where you want to watch now, not trip, not to trip. Um, but I think generally the slightly grayer, bluer guidelines at the top match the tent quite smartly. Yeah, again, a really nice big ventilation panel right at the back with the storm straps we talked about as well to get extra bracing. Every single uh, sort of guy rope point has its own little uh, Velcro toggle. So you can just Velcro up, so rather than tying it in a knot, you can Velcro it nice and neatly, then it's much easier when you're packing away, the guy ropes aren't getting all tangled up together. Other thing, finally, what else you've got really is their valve system's quite nice and it's got a big kind of like sprung loaded valve, very similar to Outdoor Revolution and like a dinghy. The only thing I would say is make sure you press the valve so it's on close before you start pumping up because otherwise your hard work will be pretty much squandered um, as you may notice possibly from the video. Uh, but generally, you know, as long as you remember to do that, <laughs> you don't have to worry about it too much. But we'll have a little look inside the uh, Lakeville and talk through a few more features that the tent has to offer. So now we're inside the lake, we can kind of get a bit of an idea for the sheer amount of space you've got in here. Like I said, I'm in the seven, but really um, this, everything I'm talking about now is basically the same as the five, just at slightly smaller dimensions. So we'll work sort of from the main canopy area, work our way back, back towards the living area. So the canopy area is pretty decent in terms of depth and also quite long width. So yeah, again, you've probably put a cooker unit in here, um, but like I talked about on the outside, you've got obviously the, the crystal clear windows to get a great almost panoramic view around there. The front panel also has windows with curtains in, so that everywhere in the tent you can get it completely sort of sealed in, so you haven't got to worry about when you're leaving the campsite that your stuff's on view for anyone to look at. Now, everywhere pretty much in the canopy area, you've got the zip up curtains, um, and it's pretty much the same throughout the tent really, so you can just very simply just sit up either halfway or take it sort of fully up if you wanted to. Um, and it just kind of gives you that better coverage and flexibility that you can obviously put it to whatever height you wanted to. Yet again, in the sort of canopy area, you've also got a ground sheet which is supplied with the tent itself. And it's kind of like a bathtub style. So it actually little toggle points located at the top, which are all co color coordinated. Just make it a filling part of the tent and fill it fully enclosed. That way, for example, if you wanted to put this divisional door all the way back, you could have this one big open living area. Um, if the, but yet again, I think if the weather turns, you want that sort of cooking facility, this is where the front area will be. By not having a ground sheet in place, it doesn't matter if you spill anything or suddenly the rain comes through the front door, uh, it's just going to soak into the ground rather than collecting the ground sheet. So you can kind of again, make it as you want it to be. Um, low level ventilation we can clearly see, that's going to certainly help with circulation, but having that mesh door in place at the front, I think is a, a big, big bonus. Moving on into the uh, living area. Like I said, we've got this divisional door, and this divisional door is exactly the same uh, and sort of can be put in half or fully back. A great big mesh panel located in the front of it, yet again, to help with that circulation of air. Um, but alternatively, you have got uh, a curtain previously behind it. So again, when someone's cooking in the main area, uh, and you can just seal this area up and then not have to worry about where, obviously, the your sort of gas is going. Um, but easily, this can be zipped back. And there's a zipper on the top and the bottom. And what this means is it just gives you a complete sort of flat entrance way between the two sections. So it really helps, like I said, to sort of break down barriers and help it to really flow through the tent. Um, and you can just roll this back. 
and then sort of yet again as always toggle points just to kind of keep it all tucked away nice and neatly mm -hmm -hmm. fingers and thumbs now what you probably can't see which you, know, you can't see from that side anyway is actually is internal storage pockets located just kind of here I will get the camera in a second and bring you in to have a look at it, but that's just extra sort of decluttering space that you can utilize as and when you need to. Oh, you've got a really nice big, uh, you know, living area, plenty of room in here. You have tables and chairs, little storage units or inflatable sofa, and you've still got, you know, ample room to get around if you want to. Like I said, general height in the tent is really quite good. I'm about six foot two, uh, and I can happily stand up in the middle, um, in the sides. Not too bad as well. I'm a little bit further away at the bottom, um, but generally it feels quite spacious. So if you're putting things like lower things like sofas or chairs in there, you shouldn't be restricted really too much in the sack itself. You've got not only uh, mesh doors on either side as well as normal doors, but there's a little vent above here as well, again, to help that circulation there. And it's that's sort of a, a big theme throughout the whole sort of tent range, regardless of brand for sort of 2020. Moving on to the sort of more unique features um, that Outwell have introduced for 2020. Uh, firstly and foremost is the darker bedrooms. So we've got much darker bedrooms now, zip dividers, um, so we can separate each section up quite happily. And it's kind of split up really as a seven. So we've got a two, two, and also a three. This I would say lends itself more to a comfy, you know, five or six berth, or really if you want a comfy four, you've got your master bedroom here with a nice 180 width. You've got a, a slightly larger double area, which is 140, and then a 120 on the side here. Just means that you can sort of put things as and when you need them, or use one for storage area. So, but alternatively, zip all of the dividers up, and then you can have it as one big open space and do as, as you please. Right, well, I've introduced basically a new quick and quiet system. So it's the ability in the master bedroom to come and go in and out of the door without having to use the zips. Now what they've managed to do is kind of by a magnetic system. So it kind of just means you just push it through, the magnets release and then close it behind you. So let's have a go at it. So as you can see there, it just literally shuts the door behind and you haven't got to worry about, you know, sort of. So it means I suppose in, in essence, you can kind of keep the bedding and all that sort of stuff in there out the way you can nip in and out to grab something without having to look at it the whole time um, rather than have it constantly closed. Um, or say if you want to wake up to go to the toilet in the middle of the night, you can happily just open it up, slip in, slip out, and not have to worry about hearing all that and waking every Tom, Dick and Harry up who are sleeping next to you. If you want to use this as a conventional door, you still can do. So there's a zip there to sort of stop the uh, magnets coming apart. Uh, and then it just sort of room unzips itself like a normal door but as you can see there's a really nice big mesh panel in the front of it the same with all the panels to help sort of airflow and actually a little bit of light if the inn is a little bit too dark for you um, and then as always toggle dividers we'll leave that down there for the time being now you've actually got a slightly deeper depth bedroom as well than your typical standard air and you can see that really plays into factor and also the way it's cut it's slightly cut deeper at the back here um, so you can pull it further back, so it means you have high-rise air beds that still happily fit in there as well. Storage pockets located in the middle at the back here, and on the two side bedrooms, you've got it located just down the, the, uh, the end up here. So it means you can put things like keys or torches or phones uh, in a place where you know it is, and the midnight you've scrambling around for something, you can happily find it, no problem at all. In the front of it, you've got little storage pockets located there as well, just to help declutter the actual part of the tent. And finally, you've got a zip located along the bottom, which allows you to put your uh, mains hookup or mains cable in here so you can charge your phones at whatever time of day. What we saw from the outside and certainly from the pitching video is the torsion in the roof. Now this is a, done by a superior system, so it's inflatable beams which Velcro in and Velcro off and have their own individual valves. So we've got four of them each way, so every single section has this. Just gives you a bit more torsion in the roof, like I said and just a bit more stability kind of front and back. So that's what the Smart Air system did originally and why it was very popular, not only for this inflation, but almost like in traditional sort of pole tents when you had the braces down the side, 
it's kind of doing that in the roof. And it also means there's no need for a sort of central guide point on the external point because you've already got that internally. Also things to mention as well is we've got a really nice big ventilation at the panel at the back which we, um, you can zip up and zip down as you're choosing. Uh, and things like cable entry points are located on the left and the right hand side so it doesn't really matter which way your mains is coming from you can still accommodate it. Another new feature for sort of 2020 is the um, kind of their new clip system. So it's ability to hang a point, uh, hang a lantern from anywhere point on this kind of little bit of beading. Very similar to very kind of the Van Gogh Skytrack system, which they've always had. Um, the main difference being that this goes all the way down to the bottom um, and the clips actually just clip straight on rather than have to slide through, you know, like a... Um, I mean, like, a, like a beaded necklace sort of thing you know you can just quite happily just clamp it on like a clothes peg put it on and then put it in between two sections now this beading is only on uh, these two beams facing into each other and then the canopy beam facing in as well um, just because it feels if you go a light it's most likely to be in the central point by the front door or in the awning section uh, and then this is just located to bedding uh, on its own the inner bedroom you can also leave and pitch it as one um, and it just makes life a little bit easier and yet again what you think you find is certainly with the darkness in there hopefully you should get a better night's sleep and not wake up certainly at the crack of dawn so really overall it's quite a nice sort of update big things obviously for the 2020 season are and um, the fact we've got um zips front on, uh, the zipper front on is always pre-attached roller bag uh, new pump, TPU beams, darker bedrooms, zip dividers, um, we've got uh, the quick and quiet bedroom, uh, we've got the new bracer beams rather than the smart air system, uh, we've got the storage pockets facing in the bedroom, uh, sorry, facing in the living area, um, so really, and the brow canopy as well, there's quite a lot of features built into this in comparison to certainly last year's Bauer and it's around about the same sort of price, so I think it's, you know, better value than it was certainly last year. But let's put the camera up and have a little bit of a look around the tent. So I've just put that down there for the time being, but you can kind of see what we're talking about. So yeah, again, the canopy depth, good sort of size. You can happily put sort of tables and like we said, a table chair in here at night and it's quite, it's a good evening. Um, alternatively, a cooking unit will happily go in there as well. Um, but you can see, by zipping that door all the way to the side or to the edge, how open that canopy really feels. And again, you've got the bracer beams located in the roof, just to give you that extra bit more stability that we've been used to with a smart air system. Um, living areas with great sort of depth. So you can write in the back here. You know, you've got loads of room for tables and chairs. Then again, you've got those little storage pockets built quite nicely into there just to help declutter. And it's got it both sides. So you've got it on the left and also sitting the right hand side as well uh, and that sort of complete lip free doorway works really nicely as well mesh doors either side got that little can the brow canopy just located there as well uh, and then you've got the mesh located right at the top the bedroom section nice and dark storage box at the back big mesh panel and then you've got the zip dividers along each side immediately not along the bottom so along the bottom it's not there um, but you know, it, it still gives you that sort of level of privacy that you need to against who you're staying next to. You've got the magnetic points, so that can reattach itself as you like it. Um, but overall, I think, yeah, really quite a smart tent. Storage pockets located on the bottom. And you can see the cable entry points actually down there, a bit higher up. Uh, the other joy of things as well is things like, uh, for the warranty side of things, if, for example, you had an issue this would be hypothetically had the issue one beam technically because all the beams are pretty much the same all by at the back beam now you can actually carry a spare beam and it doesn't have to be bespoke to each chamber because it doesn't inter interconnect to one another it just sort of stands on its own right but i think as a tent it looks incredibly smart as you can see that really nice big sort of mesh part at the back works well and then you've got those storm straps pulling that back and getting out roof looking really nice and taut but yeah overall i think positive model um certainly you know a, f a bit more of a competitor 
to the likes of the uh, Van Gogh Ventalis or the uh, Anatara. So you've got different versions of that on the go, but generally I think good, good product, good tent, great spec now we've talked about all the features and certainly seems better value than last year's Belleville, um, which is better going forward because normally <laughs> things just get more expensive and run about the same spec. So you seem to get a lot more for your extra bit of money. But that's our kind of Atwell's outdoors review on the uh, Lakeville uh, in the 5SA and the 7SA. If for any more information or package deals, check the link below uh, and we've got more information located on our website. Thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you again.